Hey everyone, welcome back to Apps from Scratch. Today, we'll create a recipe app that uses the Spoonacular API. We're going to have a search screen where the user can select their desired amount of calories and their diet. When the user taps search, a meal plan will be generated. At the top, we see the total nutrients of the meal plan, and below it, we have three different meals with images. When we tap on a meal, we're brought to another screen that displays the recipe in a web view. If you're new here, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And before we get started, I just want to thank you guys for all your support on my Flutter UI and Flutter Local Storage app Udemy courses. I'll leave coupon codes down in the description below if you're interested in checking them out, and I'm currently working on another course that should be out by the end of the month. And with that, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is jump into our pubspec.yaml file and add the dependencies HTTP and WebView Flutter. The HTTP plugin allows us to send requests to our API to get data, while the WebView Flutter plugin allows us to view web pages within our app. The only setup we have to do is for the WebView Flutter plugin on iOS devices where we add the key io.flutter.embedded underscore views underscore preview to our info plist file and set the value to yes. In order to interact with the Spoonacular API, we have to generate an API key to authenticate our HTTP requests. One thing to take note of is that the free plan has up to 150 points per day, where each API call costs at least one point. So be careful when testing so you don't hit the limit. If you do happen to reach the limit, then your API key won't work until the next day or until you upgrade your plan. Let's go to spoonacular.com slash food dash API and create an account. In your API console, go to profile and you can copy your API key right here. We're going to create the folder called services and a file called apiservice.dart. This file will handle all of our calls to the Spoonacular API. API service will be a singleton, so let's create the private constructor apiservice.instantiate and a static instance variable. We'll also add the base URL for the Spoonacular API endpoint and add our API key as a constant. Normally, I would store the API key in a separate file and add it to our gitignore like we did in the YouTube API video, but to save time, we'll just put it here. Now let's make a file called mealmodel.dart inside a models folder. This class has an ID, which allows us to get the recipe, and then other information such as the title and the image URL. Our factory constructor, meal.fromMap, parses the decoded JSON data to get the values of the meal and returns the meal object. Next we have our meal plan model.dart. Our meal plan class has a list of meals and nutrition information about our meal plan. The factory constructor iterates over the list of meals in our decoded meal plan data and creates a list of meals. Then we return a meal plan object with all of the information. Our last model is recipe model.dart. All we're storing is the spoonacular recipe URL so we can display the meal's recipe in our web view. If you wanted to, you could parse the JSON to add information about equipment, ingredients, steps, and more. Just take a look at spoonacular's documentation and you'll see that there's a lot more information about recipes that you can add to the app. Back in API service.dart, we're going to write the async function generate meal plan, which takes in our calorie target and type of diet. First, we check if the diet is none, and if it is, then we set the diet to an empty string. Our parameters include time frame, which we set to day instead of week to get three meals, target calories, diet, and our API key. The URI consists of the base URL, the endpoint we're going to hit, which in this case is recipes slash meal plans slash generate, and the parameters. Our headers specify that we want the request to return a JSON object. Inside of our try catch block, we use http.get to retrieve the response, decode the body of the response into a map, and then convert the map into a meal plan object by using the factory constructor mealplan.fromMap. If our response errors out, then we throw an error message. Fetch recipe takes in the ID of the recipe we want to get the information for. In our parameters map, we specify that we do not want to include nutrition and we pass in our API key. This time, the endpoint for our URI is recipes slash the ID of a recipe slash information. Just like before, we get the response of our endpoint inside of our try catch block and convert the decoder JSON into a recipe object. Let's fix up our main.dart file and remove everything except my app. Change the title to Flutter Recipe App, hide the debug banner, set our primary color to colors.orange300, and home to search screen. 
Don't forget to import search screen into this file once we create it. Inside of our screens directory, create search screen.dart. Search screen.dart is a stateful widget with three instance variables. Diets is the list of diets that the Spoonacular API lets us filter by. Target calories is the desired number of calories we want our meal plan to reach. And diet is our selected diet. Our build method will return a scaffold container with a decoration image that loads a network image of food as the background. Next, we have a center widget with a child container that will have our search options in a column widget. The column widget has a text widget for the title of our app, a rich text widget to style the target calories, an orange slider that sets our target calories, a simple drop down field to select the type of diet. And finally, a rounded flat button where the on press triggers a function called search meal plan. We'll write search meal plan right above our build method. It generates a meal plan by passing in our parameters to API service.instance.generate meal plan and pushes the meal screen onto the stack with navigator.push. Meal screen.dart is a stateful widget that takes in a final meal plan variable. It has an app bar and the body is a list view builder. We set the item count to 1 plus the number of meals which based on the API call, the number of meals returned should always be 3. If the index is 0, then we want to return a method called build total nutrients card. Otherwise, we return a build meal card method that takes in the meal and index minus 1. Build total nutrients card starts off by returning a container with curved edges and a box shadow. The child is a column widget that returns the nutrient information in rows. Build meal card takes in the meal and the index. We define a string variable meal type, which equals a method called meal type. Meal type returns breakfast, lunch, or dinner, depending on the value of the index. Back in build meal card, we return a stack widget with alignment center. The first widget is a container that loads the decoration image. The second widget is another container that has two text widgets, the meal type and the meal title. In order to navigate to the recipe screen with the web view that we're about to write, let's wrap our stack in a gesture detector. The asynchronous onTap function will fetch the recipe by ID using the fetch recipe method in API service.dart and navigate to the recipe screen while passing in meal type and recipe. Our stateful widget in recipe screen.dart takes a string meal type and recipe recipe. The app bar's title is widget.mealtype and the body of our screen is a web view. Don't forget to import WebView Flutter. The initial URL is equal to the Spoonacular source URL of our passed in recipe, and the JavaScript mode is set to unrestricted, so JavaScript can execute in the WebView. Now if we run our app on the simulator, we can search for our meal plan, click on a recipe, and view the recipe in our WebView. And now we completed our recipe app. As always, remember to leave a like, subscribe, share this video, and star the repository on GitHub. Thanks again for all the support on my Udemy courses, and I'll see you in the next one.